Hey guys and welcome to KNews episode 17 covering the upcoming Soyuz launch. Soyuz is the most popular and reliable Russian launch vehicle. The first two stages consist of one core and four strap-on boosters. On top sits the third and fourth stage, from which the last is able to be ignited multiple times in space. The payload consists of two similar Galileo 9 and 10 satellites, which are mounted radially and are protected by a 4.1 meter wide fairing. The launch is scheduled for today evening at 10 pm Eastern Time and will take place in Cinemary, French Guiana. The engines are ignited at T-15 seconds and get throttled to full thrust at T-3 seconds. As a launch from French Guiana already indicates, it's an ESA launch and both satellites are part of the European Satellite Positioning System Galileo, which is similar to the US GPS. Unlike other launchers, Soyuz main engines are not able to tilt or gimbal. Instead, they use tiny vernier engines on the sides to steer. They are named after the French mathematician Pierre Vernier. Each main engine has four nozzles and combustion chambers, which are fed by a single turbo pump. This leads to a total amount of 32 nozzles. The rocket will head for a 57 degrees inclined medium Earth orbit, or MEO for short. As the name suggests, such heights lie between low Earth orbit and geostationary altitudes, ranging from 2000 to almost 36,000 km. The Galileo satellites will be placed in the upper half, at 23,000 km in the so-called orbital plane A. It is one of the three orbital planes from which the Galileo constellation will transmit their signals. A little fun fact, every of the satellites is named in Galileo 9 and 10 may be also called Alba and Oriana. As mentioned, both satellites are similar but not identical and weigh a little over 700 kg each. The total payload sums up to around 1.6 tons, which is very little for a Soyuz rocket actually and the fairing will be almost half empty. This is of course due to the high orbit the payload will be brought to. It looks a little strange but is necessary because changing the fairing size would mean to change the complete aerodynamic properties of the rocket. Elba and Oriana are both equipped with two different atomic clocks. One is made with rubidium, which is also used by GPS, and the other has a hydrogen maser, which is basically a laser but shooting microwaves. It is more accurate but also way more expensive. An atomic clock, by the way, can be seen as a regular pendulum clock. While the tick-tock of such a clock is usually calibrated to one second, the atomic one needs a much faster oscillation to be more accurate. It can count nanoseconds and only goes wrong by approximately one nanosecond each 12 hours. Okay, I am currently looking for a topic I can cover in the next KNU special. Feel free to suggest anything aerospace related. That's it for this episode and I hope to see you in the next one if you like. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching.